So what do you think the stack should be here? What's good guys? It's your boy Beats Bash coming at you with another banger of a video. And today I've got for you guys a coaching session video that I recorded with a player using my favorite deck, Doflamingo, over One Piece Simulator. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. And I'd like to remind you that I'm almost at 200 subs. So if you guys could hit the subscribe button and smash that like button, I would really appreciate it. As always, if it's not the goo, it's got to go. Let's get right into it. Yeah, you're 100% keeping this hand. First, I want you to think about what is the win condition for this match. So lately, when I was playing against Kaido, uh, I felt better when I got in with uh, early aggressive pressure on him. Yeah, so go ahead and play, play your Perona. You're always doing that. So what do you think the stack should be here? Um, I would place on top and then I would uh, go with... Uh, I can't play him, but I would um, draw Mellow Mellow play him no i would draw him and play him with uh, with the ability next round and then i would draw mellow mellow and play her with the over next ability so i agree partially with what you're saying um you're 100 gonna place on top so go ahead and click that yeah now what i'm thinking is that you're going to select pacifista last so you draw him then on the following turn you're gonna stack boa and then um, on the third turn, you're going to draw Crocodile. And then on the fourth turn, you're going to um, trigger your Kuma. So I would put uh, Love Love last. So click on that. And then now you're going to draw Crocodile here. Yeah. And, and then now Boa and then Pacifista. Yeah. So yeah. the reason I, I would do this is because uh, you can go ahead and pass here. The reason that I would establish the stack like that is because um, on the following turn, when you use your leader ability to put out Boa, it's a very good chance that um, on the uh, the turn after that, he's just going to put all of his Dawn under his leader and attack it and kill it. So here, um, I would just take I go? it. Okay. That's completely uh, I've, fine. I've seen uh, Teach against, uh, against Kaido. Yeah, it's I, not I that important. Um, no, no, no. You want to yeah. save those in hand because those could protect your boa. That's the okay, only. Yeah. If you had a two K, I would. So now here, this is amazing for you. So you have the Trafalgar Law, but you're not going to play it because you want to hold it yeah. until after he plays um, a seven cost king or a ten cost Kaido. So a hundred percent here, you're going to put um, three on your leader just because you're not going to play anything else this turn. Okay, so, so my uh, thought process would be uh, two, attack, use the ability, and have one for him to, to protect my boa. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. you can, but I just wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, like to do that for the reason being yeah. that um, it's inevitable that he's going to get to play 10 cost Kaido because he has Oshigama. Yeah. So um, if we do this, then we're guaranteed to hold the um, the Trafalgar Law until after he plays that because you got to think that um, uh, what I like to do is just if we're using our leader ability every turn, then he's going to eventually have to use his 10 cost Kaido no matter what. And if he only kills stuff that we played for free off the top of our deck, we're probably mm. never losing because of the amount of advantage we've accrued. So you can go ahead and pass here. Oh, oh yeah. So and, and now if I'm yeah, I'm drawing seven cost Kaido and playing the Kuma. Um, See, so this is yeah. amazing here. Yeah. Just like I okay. said, he put all of his Dawn under his uh, Kaido, so we can just take this. I just That's resolve. Fine. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to use too many cards on that. And so now he plays a two cost blocker. Okay, that's completely fine. So, okay. So um, how much Dawn does he have right now? Uh, he has uh, seven. Okay, so that means next turn, he's not going to be able to uh, play his uh, uh, his 10 cost Kaido. So go ahead so and put your guy two. seven. Yeah. And then attack him and, and use the action. Hard action and play rested, yes. Okay, so that's really good for us. Um, so now here, I would say that the best thing for uh, us to do is play um don quixote 
Yeah, that that was I thinking because um, I need to set up my next five cards. Uh, yeah, because the next one I know is, is uh, yeah. Exactly. So we go with this. Yeah, I know that was coming. Oh, this is amazing! You get and, to keep the stack going and, even longer. This is broken. Yeah, yeah for now I would uh, uh, start placing on top, and this yep. would be my first card to click because yep. I want this last. No, obviously you uh, want that first. Oh really? Yeah. I want to draw it first. Yeah, because that guarantees you're going to continue the stack. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're, so, you're never... Um, I would probably put the Love Love Mellow on the bottom because you're never really, like, getting to yeah. play that because your hand is so yeah. insane right now. So you're putting that yeah. on the bottom. Um, no, and then the you're probably putting... Uh, you want to draw him, too? Yeah, you want to draw... Play those two. Yep, correct. And you want to play wanna... Don Quixote second. That way you can yes. get the most yes. value out of st a stack. Yes. Okay, you're better at clicking it than me. Sometimes I mess up. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So now you just uh, pass uh, it. From now, oh, yeah. Uh, you want to protect that 100%. So I would use a 1K in hand. Just use one of your teaches. He's stacking for five, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing for you. Now here, um, you kind of just have to play this, uh, take this, and that's completely yeah. fine. Because if he does play 10 cost Kaido, then he's removing his own 9 cost. So you're in an amazing position. See, that was crazy. If you would have played yeah. your, um, uh, if you would have just stacked your Kuma first instead of your Boa, then he would have died. And then whenever he played this 9 cost Kaido, you wouldn't still have a character on board. Yeah. So, do I go for this? Um. Yeah. I probably wouldn't I mean, because you have a law in I hand. Law comes down now, no. at least two on on the feet. Yep, for sure. So, and we have six now. Six. six. Okay, so um, this is amazing. So you're going to be able to uh, attack uh, with I mean, your five, five, five for yeah, three action first one here. Yeah. So that means that you could play uh, law, and you could play a four cost. So you could play Boa here. Yeah. And we know since okay. he's down, he's not going to be able to uh, use his uh, uh, his ten cost Kaido next turn. So this is amazing for you. To attack first, this card action play rested. Hold on, let's think about this for a second. I don't think you play the the Boa here. I think what you do first is you bump up your Perona by three, putting it to five, so you get an additional attacker. Mm, okay. Yeah. 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 So th this is really good because now you're attacking for five. He needs to discard a card. Yes, he has to discard a card. And now, like I said, this plays really well into the magic numbers. So now you can put one Dawn on your Pacifista. It'll be a seven, um, which means he has to discard a minimum two cards to stop this. And then you'll have one Dawn left over to play your one cost blocker law. That was amazing for us. And he just used two two Ks. Yeah, nice. And yeah, we'll top of this. Yep. I think it's almost and impossible now, for you to lose now. And now I'm going to just... I'm just you're never protecting that because he could repeat attack it with his uh, yeah. nine cost Kaido. Yeah. That's completely fine. Even if he trades with uh, every one of his characters every turn, it doesn't really affect you because uh, you know that you can continue the stack on forever and he's only at three. Yeah, I let it through. Huh? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's no reason not to. So what's uh, coming up now is um, three cost Doffy with my... Yeah, uh, so for now I'm going... Yeah, you're 100% always doing that. Now, the question is, do you, um, I, I think you can take a turn off here um, to play your seven cost croc after if you want, because he won't be able to kill it next turn guaranteed. Yeah, and it would be, yeah, and I would be at no, uh, at, uh, no, no done left yet. Okay, exactly. I'm going to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. card action, take card rested, and let's have a look. Go ahead and tell me what you think you should do. I think I want to draw him for the counter and, and not play him. And I want to play her for sure. And so that, yeah. that's a free, free card. But uh, also, this is a free card. I like your idea a lot because you have Perona in hand as well. So I think it's yeah. completely fine for you to draw the Mihawk because you're going to be able to continue the stack no matter what. I think you put t uh, Jimbe on the bottom. Since you have a Teach, you don't really need Jimbe. So yeah. that's going to be yeah. fifth. And then you're going to have a double love love. Play draw. Yeah, just Play, put, draw. put double love love uh, next. Draw. And then you're going to put Boa and then draw me yeah, off. Play draw, yes. Okay, okay. sweet. And he's, he's back to six, okay. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so, so now, now you can just go ahead and play your croc here. Yeah, dip one. I don't know, I'm, I'm drawing. 
the Mihawk and thing, but... I think you just let that go through, because you yeah. can attack it with two other guys. And I don't think you're in any um, desperation to stop him from hitting your life total. And I can send this back if I play him. Okay, that's amazing for you. Yeah, yeah. You probably just don't do that. Um, don't, don't return back his Uzu because um, uh, cause on play he can I reuse it. So this is amazing. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. Um, Queen is a great target for Mihawk here. I, I think you take this, honestly. It was really debatable whether you took that or not. Um, I could have seen yeah. you discarding three, but... The reason I think you probably keep is just because you're most likely attacking with your seven cost croc next turn to get the banish, banish effect off. Um, and, you, and now you'll have, I think, 5k to protect your uh, your croc here. So uh, for now, I'm going to. Uh, I don't think you do that. Ah. Uh, you Because you, have, you have Mihawk on his queen here. Yeah. And yeah. that's an insane tempo play. So you play you play him. Deck. How do you feel about putting the one on uh, your Perona and attacking his who, who's who for three on three? Because he's probably not oh, disengaging a card yeah. on that. And that's giving, if we leave that up, we're allowing him another attacker for next turn. If he discarded a card here, then it's pretty much guaranteed you're banishing. Yeah, so he yep. protected. So that's really good here. Now you can use your leader to attack his who's who. And now Croc will and hit then. his face. Sweet. Uh, and turn. Honestly, you could have kept the... Um, you could you could have played the Trafalgar Law here, but uh, I just didn't think you really need to because you have yeah. so much counter in hand. You've got one, a two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, seven k. He's going with it. Um, so he's, I think he's definitely gone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He will, he will go for it. If he if he attacks both face, I think it's totally fine for you to let yourself go to zero because. Um, if let's say we used our counter first, he could then use his leader ability to blast for the last damage and then attack again. I think he should go all in here. If he goes all in, I think you have lethal next turn because you have three attackers, one banish, four attackers potentially. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. And he's discarded quite a few two Ks, I think. Let's have a look. Okay, two K, two K. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's only attacking for 5,000. I think that's fine for you to block. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. Use, probably use one of the Peronas. Yeah. Okay, I take this off. Yeah, I guess you do have to take oh, it here. Oh. And then he probably burns for the last damage. It would be on the pass. Yeah, you have an, enough card. Uh, you have enough blockers oh. in hand that I think it's fine if you go to zero. Okay, that's amazing. Now oh. you have a 2k. Okay, you're 100% safe. There it is. Oh, that's completely fine. <laughs> I, I like to 100% start off with Perona here, just to see what's on the stack. Yeah. So, oh yeah, the two Menos and, and this one, and yeah, those two. The Gekamoria is really, really good for you here. Yeah, I could use him to get uh, one drop law. You could use him to get the one drop law, um, or you could use him to get the three cost Don Quixote. So, let's yeah. assume you're going to be using your leader ability here, so you have six mana after that. Um, so you could play one law. No. Yeah, six, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you could one play law, one law, five. you could play a blocker, and then you play that. I mean, I, I think you do uh, definitely put Gecko Moria on the top for sure. You're gonna trigger him, and... Take that draw, take that draw. Mihawk, yeah. uh, I think you draw level of beam. Level of beam is gonna be really good for protection. Yeah. Jinbei probably goes in the bottom. No problem. So do I want to draw those and yeah. trigger those? You want to draw both your level of beam. Uh, oh. Yeah. So like this and Yeah, I hit his leader this. for seven here. And I go one cost law first. probably. So this plays around if he has seven cost king, because you can play three blockers here instead of two. So you can put up your uh uh, your boa and then you can put up um, you know two law and it's probably the best thing you can do and then you can put it on under boa or yep. you only have six yeah so you just play you just play a boa and then you just play two law now I don't think he's gonna have enough dawn up to answer your board and if he doesn't you have guaranteed lethal okay. see exactly mm -hmm. see he had the, the seven cost yeah, king yeah, yeah. if we didn't do exactly that then you just die Okay, 
I go for card in this. I need to block this. No, nah, wait, why would you block? He doesn't have enough to use. Ah, uh, I just have. Yeah, I have one life left. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just take it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, trigger. That is hard. Yeah, you might as well just put it on the yeah. board. She's an additional attacker. Yeah. And just don't select for it. There's nothing for you to target. Yeah. yeah. Now, if he attacks with his leader, um, you can uh, just discard one card from hand. So it doesn't really matter what you have. You just have lethal. You can discard to each. That's fine. And that should be game for you. So you got to do, do two here. So let's think about the magic numbers here. How many people can you get to seven? So if you did two on Gecko, two on... Um, uh, Boa and two on your leader that's six you would have four left you could pump up um, one of your Peronas or your Perona your Jimbe so let's say if you just made someone six instead so if you paid three for Jimbe three for Perona that's six you would have four left then you could pump up um, Gecko uh, Boa and Doffy by one and one of them would get two so start off by um Pumping up your Perona to 5k. Attack with your lowest guy first. Because you got five attacks here. He's only got one life. I'm pretty sure you got it. So yeah, so you just discarded a one guy. So you can bump your Jinbei up to 5k now. Jinbei to 5, okay. One on him. So attack with someone for five. Attack with your leader for five. Okay, now you can just make two people seven. It doesn't matter what he has, because, you know, like we said, um, if, you, if you're hitting for seven on his leader, he needs two cards. Well, he only has two cards total. Oh, yeah. And I draw a card, yes. Yeah, so now you just put the last two. And that's GG. I think you played it really well. Let me ask you this. What is typically the meta at your locals? Uh, the most thing I've seen was um, Red Rush, um, uh, Red Green Law. Okay. And I played against one Duffy and one Crocodile. Okay, that's and, that's perfect. Yep, yep. So that actually uh, is going to work really well because. Um, that's kind of similar to what my meta is, so um, I can definitely give you some insight on the deck. So first things first, um, I think that you definitely cut Desert Spada. I think that it's just way too slow, and especially yeah. versus aggro. Um, that card, you just have like, you don't really want to leave your Dawn up, because ideally, you want to use your leader ability every single turn. Yeah, but I go with uh, with all of my people. Yeah. Love Love Beam is probably um, one of the best blue cards in the game. I think pretty much in every blue deck right now, you want to play four Love Love Beam. Now, the second thing I'm noticing is you're only playing two Boa. 100% yeah. man, you need four Boa. Probably the best blue card in the game right now. You know, I know I said that about Love Love Beam, but Boa, I see uh, staying playable for at least six months to a year minimum. Because even if the power level of all four drops in the game went up from being uh, a four mana 5k to six, you would probably still play Boa just because it's a plus one every turn and it's a counter. So um, I would definitely recommend taking out Desert Spada from the deck completely. You could play one if okay. you want. One to two at most, but 100% you're playing four Boa. Um, and also, you want to play four Traflagar Law. Traflagar Law is just so integral to the deck because, um, number one, it makes it to where, yeah, you, if you have one mana, that's the most impactful action in the game. And it's a card that can protect your Boa. So a lot of times if you set up the stack um, and you're going into, let's say, uh, four mana, and you Perona turn one. So you know that Boa is on top of your deck. Well, if you went second, you're on four Dawn and you can play your Traflagar Law and you can use your Doffy ability. And since your Boa comes in tapped, um, you're not gonna be able to protect it unless you use cards from hand. And if your yeah. Boa survives till next turn, you are just so far ahead by the amount of cards it's uh, generating for you. So yeah, I cut uh, Desert Spada and put that on and put Traflaga. Yes. Now, I would say, I just do not think that the uh, 
four cost uh, blocker pacifista is really that good because you know you want to have as many cards in the deck as possible to hit off of uh, your leader ability since we're using it every turn and you're already running four pacifista so you don't really need any more copies of that the way I like to think about it is Kuma is the guy you want to um, not draw in your hand but hit with your leader ability whereas pacifista I like to stack him on top of the deck um, so if I see pacifista and Kuma in the same stack with Perona I'll usually put Pacifista on top of the deck, and then I'll put uh, Kuma second from the top. That way, when I'm guaranteed to put it in Rested, and they attack it next turn, you're guaranteed to get a body, which is insane. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. like I was saying before, one of the problems with the deck is that um, on, on the turn that you want to, like, make action and take control of the board, you usually only have, like, one to two attackers because there's no rush. So... Yeah. Um, I probably would not play the blocker pacifista uh, at all. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't play him at all, man. I like the idea that um, I can block with uh, with Kuma and and then send in another blocker. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. but it's like you really just don't need another blocker to come in because that yeah. could just be a card that you discard from hand. So one thing I'm noticing about your build is that you don't play um, any two Ks besides Mihawk. Um, so in my yeah. build, I played four Alvita. If you want to play three Alvita, you can. Um, but I just want to have as many two Ks as possible because ultimately two Ks is what's going to um, be the difference between protecting your uh, boa and not protecting your boa. And if you get back to your turn after hitting boa off of your trigger ability, you're so far ahead. It's so far hard for the other guy to come back. So you would go with four Alvita? I played four Alvita. I played it with three, but uh, uh -huh. I prefer four. If you want to play three, I'm also okay with that. Let's look okay, how it turns out. Um, and the rest, you would leave it, but uh, or would you? You, you mentioned Jimbe. Since you're saying that your meta is mostly red, um, green, you know, and law, I think Jimbe is crazy. Yeah, because it, it 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 gets rid of Zoro. Yeah, no, yeah. and because you got to think. There's also a lot of situations, I was kind of insinuating it in our match, that um, let's say like, you know, you attack my Bonnie, and then I use a blocker or I use a card from hand to discard. Well, then yeah. I just used a card and then you play Jimbe. You put it on the bottom of the deck and you just baited me. You know, you got me to use more cards than I was going to. And if you used your leader ability to do that, then you didn't even tap any of your characters. So it's at no expense to you. So I played two Jimbe. You could play one if you want. I don't think any more than two is necessary just because it's so searchable. If you're managing your stack, you should, you know, usually you're going to see it. Where would you make room for the gym there? Okay, so I'll give you a couple options. Number one, Here. you could cut uh, an Alvita. You could also cut a Mihawk or you could cut a seven cost Doffy. I think like a lot of people like to play two seven cost Doffy, two Mihawk. Um, you know, that kind of depends on your meta. In my experience, I just felt like two Mihawk, one Doffy was fine because I only really wanted uh, to see Doffy if I already had access to Mihawk. But, you know, I think two and two is fine. It's just the problem with having too many big guys is the fact that you don't have enough um, counters in hand. And that just leads to where they kill, they kill your guy that you brought off uh, of your leader ability. And you want to protect that, you know, as much as possible so that it becomes an attacker on the next turn. If you're able to protect the guy that you summoned off of your leader ability, then if they attacked with a character and failed to do that, next turn, your guy you protected is killing their character. So you're just getting back the card you discarded. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking to, to, to go 2-1 uh, instead of uh, going to 3-1. To the other thing that is different about my build is that I played three pacifista instead of four, but you can play four. That's completely mm -hmm. fine. I've seen a lot of people mm -hmm. do good with four. It's just kind of up to personal preference. You know, it, if you're playing against a lot of Kaido, it's definitely better to have four because, yeah. you know, you always want to have uh, the Kuma on board so they it. kill it. And I played a uh, three croc as well, like the seven cost one, but two is fine too. I've thought about going down to two. Everything else in your build, I mean, it looks pretty fine. It's kind of just, you know, up to personal preference, like what you would like to have in the deck. So um, the boa, the fact that she's a blocker and mm -hmm. just 
sometimes restricts me from from going the aggressive attacking way because um, yeah, it, it, she hits for 6k, but I know next turn uh, she will be definitely the target, and I think that's just my, my mindset. That's fine, um, because you gotta think about it like this. Um, let's say you put out Boa, you know, off of your leader on turn two mm. or turn three. Well, my turn comes around, now I'm immediately thinking, I wanna kill your Boa, because if I don't, you're gonna generate a card next turn. And if you have a 2k in hand to protect it, and I attacked with my um, five five attack Zoro. Well, then um, you negated it by discarding a card, and then I have to pass back to you. And then so yeah. then on your turn, you lost a card. You know, so you're down down one card to your opponent. Well, now you can use your Aboa to attack my Zoro, and then if you successfully kill my Zoro, you just got back a card for discarding the card on my turn. But you yeah. also drew a card. So now you have a plus one in card advantage. And even if, when it goes back to my turn, I'm able to, able to kill your Boa, you still had a plus one on the interaction because you didn't even play that Boa from hand. You got it off of your leader ability. So that was technically just a free card. Let's think about the fact you go first and you, you've got Perona on hand, but no Boa. You play the Perona and, and you see Boa, but you don't have any counters on hand. Do you cycle her to the... To the um, uh, fifth turn so that you um, play her with the second Doffy ability or just do you say okay I'm gonna play her um, in turn three or your turn two um, and, and, and hope she doesn't get killed. And that's the, one of the biggest decision makers in the deck, I would say, is knowing how much you should value your Boa. Like, yeah, it is a good card, but ultimately one of the best things yeah. about it is that it diverts their attacks from your life total to your Boa. I mean, even if they use um, their attack to kill your Boa, that's completely fine because you still generated that card for free. And that means that they're tapping someone to kill it. So even if they successfully kill it during your turn, then you're, uh, I mean, during their turn, when it goes back to you, you're going to be able to use your leader to kill it. So typically, if I have, um, if you have two things that can be summoned off of your leader ability and you're stacking, I will oftentimes put um, Boa as like the first one. If, uh, if it's like, you know, let's say you have the choice of stacking um, Boa and three cost Doffy. You know, I'm always putting uh, three cost Doffy as the second stack target, you know, just because he's gonna allow me to continue yeah. the cycle. Uh, and it doesn't really matter if your guys survive, as long as you can continue the cycle, because yeah, you're just gonna be ahead. Um, but sometimes, yeah, it just depends. If you know that they're gonna have a lot of guys who can trade, sometimes if you have like more things to stack, like let's say you could um, put a Mihawk on top and then you just draw a Boa for your turn. Sometimes I do that too, you know, just because they're gonna kill it either way. You just gotta determine yeah. if they have enough cards to kill your unit either way. And if you do, sometimes it's better to have Boa. But, you know, ultimately Boa is just really replacing the um, blocker pacifista you had. And ultimately they're very similar. It's just the fact that she has a yeah. 1K counter yeah, in hand as well, which is very important. The counters, trust me, they just, they come up so much.